Hi everyone, welcome back to the MPTA online service. We're so excited to have you with us today. Before we start with the service, let's open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful week you've given to us. We thank you for bringing us together once again for this Sunday service, for us to be able to praise and worship you, Lord, together. Grant us wisdom as we listen to your word this morning, and we commit to this service unto your hand, Lord's Father. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, Amen. Let's get into worship. Rescue me, sing it out 
Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive Sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free at last, meeting face to face I am yours Jesus you are mine endless joy and perfect peace earthly pain finally will see celebrate Jesus is alive he's alive and oh happy day happy Sin away, oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same, oh, happy day, happy day. You washed my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same.
Today, as we take the Holy Communion, we are reminded again about Jesus' sacrifice and His death. Hari ini, ketika kita mengambil perjamuan kudus ini, kita diperingatkan tentang pengorbanan dan kematian Yesus. His body broken for each and every one of us. Tubuhnya yang diserahkan untuk kita semua. His blood signifying the new covenant poured out for each of us. Darahnya merupakan simbol perjanjian baru yang dicurahkan bagi kita. And this communion, it is our proclamation of the gospel speaking about his death and his second coming. Dan perjamuan suci ini juga adalah pemberitaan Injil sebab kita mengistiharkan kematian Yesus dan juga kedatangannya. Our reading is going to be from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 26. Ayat bacaan kita hari ini adalah daripada 1 Korintus 11 ayat 23 hingga 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Aku telah menerima daripada Tuhan apa yang telah kusampaikan kepadamu, bahawa pada malam dia dihianati, Tuhan Yesus telah mengambil roti dan selepas mengucap syukur, dia telah memecah-mecahkan roti itu lalu berkata, Ambil dan makanlah, inilah tubuhku yang diserahkan untukmu lakukan ini sebagai peringatan kepadaku demikian juga sesudah makan dia mengambil cawan itu sambil berkata cawan ini perjanjian baru dengan darahku setiap kali kamu meminumnya lakukan ini sebagai peringatan kepadaku kerana setiap kali kamu makan roti dan minum dari cawan dengan cara demikian kamu memberitakan kematian Tuhan Hingga kedatangannya. Let's take the bread. Mari kita ambil roti. Let's take the cup. Mari kita ambil cawan. Let's eat the bread. Mari kita makan roti. Let's drink. Mari kita minum. Let's pray and I'll lead us in a word of prayer. Mari kita berdoa, saya pimpin kita dalam doa. We thank you God for the gift of your son who died for us. Kami berterima kasih kepadamu Tuhan kerana memberi anakmu Yesus yang mati bagi kami. We remember his great sacrifice for us. Kami diperingatkan tentang pengorbanannya bagi kami. Our lives are now in Jesus. Hidup kami sekarang di dalam Yesus. May it be until the very end. Kami berdoa agar hidup kami terus tetap bersama Yesus sampai akhir. In Jesus name we pray. Dalam nama Yesus kami berdoa. Amen. Good morning once again everyone, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Greetings to all of you in the love of Jesus, our living Savior. Trusting that everyone is in good health and enjoying the presence of God every day. Before we listen to the Word of God today, let us have a time of prayer, giving all glory, praise, and adoration to our living God. 
Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to listen to your word for today on your anointing upon us. We thank you for a new day and a new opportunity to share your word, your love, and blessing to those around us. We pray that you help us, Father God, to understand your word and your promises and your faithfulness to us. Precious Holy Spirit of God, give us understanding of your word for us at this hour. In Jesus' precious, loving name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, everyone, the topic for us on the message of God today is your anointing. This text we refer to is from 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. Your anointing. We read 1 John 2, 27 that says, By this anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. In the Old Testament time, they anoint with oil kings. So that is a brief, uh, brief summary on what is anointing. In the Old Testament times, they anoint with oil kings, prophets, priests, and other leaders. They sprinkle oil on the objects for various reasons for symbolic or priestly anointing. So in the Old Testament, it was material anointing with oil. But today in the New Testament, we are anointed with the Holy Spirit after we repent from our sin and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Let us look at a few or just two examples of different anointing in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Number one, under the Old Covenant, only the priests and kings plus one prophet were anointed. We can refer to this from Leviticus 8, 12 and 1 Kings 19, verse 16. But under the new covenant, all believers, every believer in Christ, are anointed as kings and priests. Revelation 1, 6, 1 John 2, 20. Under the old covenant, anointing was done by pouring oil on somebody by a prophet like in 1 Samuel 16, 12 to 13. But under the new covenant, we are anointed by the Holy Spirit. So we don't need any prophet to anoint us, but the Holy Spirit will himself anoint us. 2 Corinthians 1, 20, 21. So we have one question. Number one here, as anointed children of God, what does God, our Father, once from us. The anointing with oil in the Old Testament was a sign that God has chosen that person for a particular task, such as being a king, priest, and other duties. Under the new covenant from the original 11 faithful apostles to all believers throughout the world in Christ, we are anointed by the Holy Spirit to serve Jesus Christ. We are set aside, we are called by God to serve Him and anointed by the Holy Spirit. So God our Father has called us and anointed us for different callings. Some are called and anointed to be a father, mother, teacher, doctors, farmer, administrator, and so on. That is why the topic for our message today is your anointing. So let us look uh, in detail. What does God our Father wants from you and me? He wants us to live as children of God. In Romans 6.13 we read, Do not present any parts of your body to sin as instruments to be used for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead and your members of God as instruments to be used for righteousness. God needs you and his 
as his child to change the spiritual darkness around you to light. He needs you to be the solution to any problem in your area of influence like family, relatives, neighbors, and community. If you do not know how to live this life as a child of God under his anointing, God said, ask him, pray for him, pray for wisdom from him, he will give you. If you are a child of God in Christ, there is no such thing that you are better than anyone else. We, are, we all have the same Holy Spirit, the same Savior, the same gracious Father. In the body of Christ, there is no racism, no prejudice, no arrogance, no favoritism, no pride, no jealousy. There is no such thing for us, for we were all saved as terrible sinners by Jesus Christ. So there are two conducts that we will consider today. They are responsibilities and relationships. Relationships and responsibilities. We will consider these two callings just for today. The number one is relationships. All humans on this earth, either you are married, not married, or single, you are either a father, mother, son and daughters, or children. If you are a father, your calling and anointing to be a father is a very high calling. Love your wife, your children, and your relatives like Christ loves us. Use your time to build a family relationship and cherish them each day. Your calling is to build and develop relationships with God's anointing. God looks at every intention that we have and wants every anointed father to be an example and role model to the children. A father who is rude, unrespectful, impatient to the wife, will raise up the same kind of children contributing to the moral decay we see in the world today. The anointed people of God in the church are supposed to make a difference in the world we live in. A husband has to protect the wife in love, humility and purity. Stay away from the schemes of the devil, for God hates cheating and adultery. In Hebrews 13, 4, we read, Let marriage be kept honorable in every way, and the marriage bed undefiled. For God will judge those who commit sexual sins. Number two, if you are a wife, your calling and anointing is to love your husband, love your children, your brothers, sisters, and other members of the family. Serving the family is not because of duty, but an anointed calling to glorify God. The husband and wife should live in the truth and not deceiving one another. Telling lies is of the devil and it comes from the pit of hell. So always tell the truth to one another, for God hates deception. Speaking the truth to one another and be ready to forgive one another in times of weaknesses. In Mark chapter 4 verse 22 we read, Everything that is hidden will be made clear before God. Every secret things will be made known. The calling and anointing to be one in the marriage has to be honored and be protected at all cost to glorify God. A father and a mother arouse God's anger and judgment if you share your bodies with another person outside of the marriage. It brings condemnation. If you are a son or a daughter or a, or a, ch a child, love your father and mother, your sisters, your brothers, your aunties, your uncles, and other relatives. Find ways to show your care and not just once but always. For faith without action is dead. But faith in action brings life. Your respect, kindness, 
and passions affect others and God will do the rest in their lives if you live as an anointed light for God. Caring and developing relationships is so important to God for He is a God who loves to have close relationship with you and me. To leave God's callings and anointing upon us are not simple and easy because the devil works 24 hours to keep you from fulfilling your calling and anointing. Use your tongue to worship and glorify God. Use your tongue to say kind words to others. There are more ways to kill people. You can kill them with your mouth. Do not let the devil take control of your mind and cause you to say killing words. What comes out of the heart of men defile that person. It is not the things we eat that defile a person, but what defile that person is what comes out of the mouth. From out of the mouth comes from a wicked heart. Do not let the devil take control of your heart. The words you say can cut the wounds on others. The unkind words you say about anyone is like a sharp knife that stabs them bleeding. Spiritually, there are many Christians who are wounded, hurt, bleeding from stab wounds by other Christians, members of the family, who are not serious about their calling as an anointed child of God. Anyone who is not serious about their calling is making themselves available to the devil who prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for victims to tear down. After he has torn you down, you may live physically, but you are very ineffective spiritually. So the second part from relationship, we move on to responsibilities. The second part of what God wants us from our anointing and calling. Responsibilities. As a father, mother, husband, wife and children, your profession can be a teacher, a farmer, a doctor, a businessman, an engineer, a lawyer, an administrator and so on. But our responsibilities are the same. To be reminded that your calling is to walk and live in your profession as a Christian a child of God in a world infected by spiritual darkness and pandemic of moral decay and corruption. We need to be a light in the darkness. We need to be the solution to situations around us and not the problem. Do not complain and complain about any situation. Pray and ask God to use you as the solution to the situation around you. Defeat the devil by having victory every day in exercising your gift and anointing. Every single one of us have an anointing to make a difference wherever we are. I always pray, God do not take me back just yet. I need to warn as many people and bring them to Christ to snatch them from their way to hell. I keep New Testament books in my car to be ready to be given to people in the street who receive Jesus Christ into their lives. So let us be ready because the coming of Jesus is really, really very soon. During this physical pandemic COVID-19, we read from WhatsApp, people WhatsApp one another, where and which part is the latest victim, which clinic they went to, who are the relatives of the victim. Do not go to this place, do not go to this office or that place because the person, the husband works there. People are so gripped with fear and death. They just fear physical death. But are we as fearful of sin that brings us eternal death? There is a pandemic spiritual 
going on in the world today. Eternal separation from God, from sin that we do not really care is what God wants to, us to wake up from. People who go to hell are not going to be there a few hundred years. They are going to spend millions and millions of years in hell fire with brimstone. That's why we need to live our life to snatch people on their way to hell. This spiritual pandemic of sin should make people avoid it more than this physical pandemic. When it comes to sin that brings spiritual death, eternal separation from God, we tend to be so casual that we seem not bothered at all. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, hell is real. The coming of Jesus is real. We are now living in the birth pains of the end times. This is a judgment time before Jesus comes where he said he has no pleasure in those who are lost. Jesus suffered that all may receive his grace and salvation. On the cross, he exchanged his righteousness for our sins that we may escape hell. Please wake up all of us, children of God. Spend time to read the word and pray always. Pray for one another. Find time to share the word of God to others through whatever means you have. God does not like casual Christians. That is why God said in Revelation 3.16, So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. In the spiritual realm, the devil targets the casual Christians. The devil does not target unbelievers because they are already in his camp. The casual Christians are not serious about submitting to the word of God. They do not want to humble themselves but remain prideful. They start to live a life of compromise. They are like the five foolish virgins in Matthew 25, 1-13 who never made it into heaven in the end. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, because we carry the name of the Lord, be alert and grow up in your anointing and calling. God said, if we are pridefully talking about our tomorrow, boasting about our tomorrow, that is so evil, he said. Do not use any part of your body as an instrument to sin. Use your mind to plan and work on things that glorify God, for God knows even our thoughts. In Luke 8, 17, we read, For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, nor is anything secret that will not be known and comes to light. And in Hebrews 4, 13, God said, And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must one day give account to what we have lived here. We are answerable to the way we live our anointed calling as children of God. In conclusion, we must strive to live our calling and anointing by the Holy Spirit to a holy life because our God who sees our every move, He is the one who wants us to live our life for Him. In whatever profession we are, even how successful we are in this world, every human deep down in his heart has the same longing an emptiness in the heart that needs to be filled by God, our Creator, only. That is why we as children of God be actively live as light to others around us. There is nothing hidden from God. Our attitude and response to our calling and anointing determines our lives 
in eternity. We did not create ourselves. God made us, and He wants us to live the way He anointed us, and He wants to live us to live our calling on His term. We do not have any freedom at all because He is the one who made us. And we have to live by His word to lay our conditions. There is no reason, no authority for God to listen to us. For God's declared plan for us is to prosper us and not to harm us. His plans to give us hope and eternal future. Shall we pray? Dear God, our precious, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the anointing and calling you have for each one of us. Help us to live in obedience to your word and fulfill the calling you have for us. Help us to be faithful to you in carrying out our anointed calling. Help us not to take for granted our anointing, but to treasure what you have given us as precious and the best. Help us to stand out and be a light in the midst of darkness, a solution to problems around us, and make a difference wherever we are. Help us, Father God, to lead others in faith, to receive new life in Christ Jesus. Build our faith to depend on you entirely for every need and not on our own strength and abilities. Help us to use our anointing to expand the kingdom of God by bringing many to the saving grace of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for your love and mercy. Help us not to look down on others, but to love them as precious to you. Help us not to judge and condemn one another, but to love others. Teach us to number our days and prepare us for the soon coming of our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, our living Savior, we pray. Amen. We would like to inform that the church office is now open every Tuesday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Christian Education Lessons Online via Zoom will be available this Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and is accessible from 9.45 a.m. Links and passwords will be sent out prior to this session, so do download the Zoom application on your devices. For more information, do contact Elder Lau. Our Tuesday corporate prayer will go on as usual, so let us take the time to pray for one another as a church wherever we are. Prayer points will be published every Tuesday evening. Home cell groups are also available every week, so do contact your cell leaders for more information. You can directly send in your tidings offerings and givings to the church office to Sister Elizabeth Balan. It can also be made through check, cash deposits or online banking transfer. Don't forget to inform our church treasurer, Deacon Richard, if you have given in your tithings, offerings and givings. We at BM Pelita would also like to wish happy birthday to the July babies. May God bless you and your family. And that is all for this week's announcements. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more church news. Past recordings are also available on this channel. Thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to our Kita Creative channel. Have a great week ahead, stay safe, and see you next Sunday. God bless.